Jetpack pilot Nick McCumber is one of the leading pioneers. He's featured in a new Smithsonian Channel documentary, and their cameras were rolling as he set the world record for the highest jetpack flight from a building. He circled the 45th floor rooftop of the Four Seasons Hotel in Denver. All wow. right, go Nick, go, and Nick joins us here in the studio. Hello. Hey. It looks really cool when you see it on camera. You said as a little kid you were a risk taker. You like to push the envelope, do things that people don't. Yeah. Like this. Yeah, exactly. So uh, naturally when I got a lucky opportunity to uh, fly the jetpack, it was kind of right at home for me. Because what yeah. does it feel like, Nick? Um, it's, it's a tough feeling to describe, but it's it's like what every kid dreamed of, yeah. you know, it, it, it's like soaring through the Flying. air like a bird, yeah, yes. and um, as I got more and more flights in, I became more and more close to the machine, now I strap it on, it's like walking down the street for me, or riding a bike, I mean, it's it's an incredible feeling, it's a soar like a bird. So you can go up to the 45th floor and soar like a bird, but the question is, how long can you soar? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 28 seconds in this machine, and, yeah. And after 28 seconds, what happened? Uh, we call it a prayer or shoot. A <laughs> prayer <laughs> a what? A prayer or shoot. A prayer, a prayer and a shoot. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so you get 28 seconds. You always have to fly it back to the ground. Yeah. So it's a, it's a what, quick rush. What are the limitations? Why will it only fly for 28 seconds? So uh, I'm constantly battling this fuel to weight ratio, uh, thrust to weight ratio. And the more fuel I add in the machine, the longer I can fly, but then I get to a point where I don't get off the ground. Oh. So that's that's the issue. You can only get so much lift out of one reaction. Because it looks very heavy, yeah. is it? Um, the machine's about 65 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, when it's fully loaded, it's about double that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I fill up the two tanks on the outside, take mm -hmm. full of hydrogen peroxide, and um, by the time 28 seconds is up, that those are empty. But you would assume that technology is moving so fast that at some point the power pack will be big enough uh, to carry you a further distance. Right. Actually, this technology was developed, you know, in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. But um, go fast sports and Jetpack International, we're working on something that, that can fly for maybe 30 minutes. Wow. What's the future? <laughs> What's the future of this technology? I mean, Charlie was just sort of musing, you know, that someday in the future you could essentially be flying by yourself to a destination like an airborne motorcycle. Was he was talking I'm... about going to the Hamptons. Can we do that? I like that um, idea. Well, it you know, the Hamptons, but we're we're working <laughs> on a prototype. Did you say Hamptons? Yeah. But, I, uh, but I said where I really wanted to go was where I live, not the oh, Hamptons. Yeah. Well, I would like to go to the Hamptons. <laughs> we'll get you to the Hamptons. <laughs> okay, go ahead. When do you see that technology <laughs> being in place? How long might that take? Well, um, you could actually go someplace that's 30 minutes away. Mm -hmm. uh, we're realistically a year or two away, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, we have a prototype built. Um, it's a turbine-based platform. It's a different configuration, but it's definitely a game changer. So what's the most constant use for it today? Today? Just um, to have a fun trip for yeah, 30 it's, seconds? Th to this machine, is kind of for show. Right. Um, you know, they say one is a show and two is a sport, right? Yeah. Is it hard, is it hard Nick? Because it looks very cumbersome. And in the documentary, you were saying so many things can go wrong. Yes, yes. There's a lot, worry of, about. a lot of things that can go wrong. Um, it's all about preparation. And uh, for me, it's, I've been really lucky. Uh, it's a really difficult thing to learn how to fly. And Do you have an understanding girlfriend? Uh, yeah, the thinking. family and the girlfriend are all very understanding, obviously. Uh, well, great to have you here, Nick Maycomber. Thank you so hey, much. Can Thank we get a tight shot of his eyes while Nora's going to break? Yes. Anybody? There Nick you go. will be on our Facebook page shortly answering your questions for the Jetpack Man. Incredible Flying Jetpacks <laughs> premiere Sunday on the Smithsonian Channel, which partners with Showtime, owned by CBS. You're watching CBS This Morning. Mm -hmm.